Well, joining me now are three MPs from the different parties. Francis Duroin is the Liberal MP for the Eastern Ontario riding of Glengarry Prescott Russell. Uh, Jamie Schmail is a Conservative MP for the Central Ontario riding of Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock. And Don Davies is the NDP member for Vancouver Kingsway, and he's his party's health critic. All three of you, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank okay, you. well, let's start. Uh, Francis Duroin, uh, and this, I'm going to put this question to all three of you. Why on earth are federal politicians, uh, what we're watching today, why are you so uh, involved and getting so involved in the provincial budget in Ontario? Uh, Francis Duroin. Well, I'd say as a member of Parliament for uh, Rural Ontario, um, I was extremely disappointed to see the 25% cuts in the Department of Agriculture uh, within um, the Government of Ontario. I think when you want to show Ontarians you have a plan for prosperity, I think it's a lot more than just changing the colour of licence plate and hoping that this is a plan to grow the economy. Ontarians want to know and want, to, uh, want Ontarians to know that there's uh, a plan to grow the economy and that's what we've shown here at the federal level. I mean, as a Franco-Ontarian as well, we've extended the hand multiple times to show the Ontario government that we're ready to fund the Franco-Ontarian University at 50% and yet we've seen no signal of the Ontario government and the Ford government to uh, demonstrate a will to fund that particular university. So it's a, it's a government of austerity, it's a government of cut, 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 and we've seen it as a student in 1998. I was walking out with teachers, and we'll see that, I'm afraid, again in 2019 and in 2020 because of the cuts of the Ford government. Okay, Jamie Schmail, I mean, I've heard Conservatives getting quite involved as well in this uh, Ontario Ford government, uh, Conservative government uh, budget. Uh, why are you getting so involved? Well, clearly the Liberals just want to take the spotlight off their horrible tax and spend multi-billion dollar deficit budget. But let's remember how Ontario got to this place. It was the policies of Kathleen Wynne, Dalton McGuinty, Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty that made Ontario the most indebted sub-sovereign nation in the world with double the debt of California and a third of the population. It was Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty who had Ontario facing some of the highest energy rates anywhere in North America. It was Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne that ensured that Canada, or sorry, Ontario saw manufacturing jobs leave at the rate of 300,000 in their term out of the province of Ontario. So the uh, Ontario PCs have a big mess to clean up and they're working hard at doing that. And they are still running about $11 billion deficit and my friend here calls that austerity. So I'm, I'm not sure what that is all about. Okay, but why the provincial level? I mean, traditionally, I mean, our, our viewers are sophisticated enough to know there's a difference between federal and pro provincial levels. Why are you so invested, uh, all of you, in this provincial uh, budget? Well, I think it goes to the point, as I just mentioned there as well, but also that Ontario for a short time under Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne was a have-not province. So I think it's, it's important to remember that and the fact that the brain trust behind those policies picked up their stuff. In some cases, we paid their moving expenses and now they're here in Ottawa in some very influential and key leadership positions here in the Prime Minister's office. So if we don't want the entire country to feel the misery that we felt in Ontario and have felt over 15 years of Liberal rule, we need to ensure that Andrew Scheer is Prime Minister and we limit Justin Trudeau to just four years. Okay, uh uh, Don Davies, you're, you're weigh in on this. Uh, are you surprised uh, by the extent to which your fellow federal MPs are getting involved in this Ontario election? A little bit. Uh, I mean, I think there's obviously partisan reasons why the Liberals and Conservatives are digging in on the, the Doug Ford government, and and uh, then there's there are some policy reasons. The partisan ones are obvious. I I think that the the Trudeau government is desperate to change the channel on their SNC Lavalin scandal that they've been mired in for the last two months and. And Doug Ford's budget gives them a good opportunity, I think, to try to take Canadians' attention off off that. From a policy point of view, though, Ontario is is you know the largest province uh, along with Quebec in the country, and and uh, they they take up a disproportionate part of our economy. And and I think the uh, all Canadians uh, do have an interest in how Ontario is doing. So you, you do see a very, uh, I think. Um, a Trump-like approach to politics in Ontario, and I, I think that Liberals and Conservatives see that as p potential uh, presage of, of the next federal election where, you know, we have two very different versions of government there, and of course the New Democrats believe that, that we have a, a more compelling vision to bring to Canadians. Yeah, because just to, for the record, I mean, I've, I've heard federal NDPers also commenting on the Ontario election as well. Well, I think that doesn't matter at what level in government, uh, government is about choices. And when you see the, the Doug Ford government, you know, cut health care and cut education spending and cut services to vulnerable people, that represents a certain approach to governing and, and a philosophy that I think Canadians expect to see in the sheer Conservatives. And uh, I know the New Democrats will be offering a, a much different 
vision of, of uh, good government in October. And so it's a chance for us to focus on that. Okay, Francis Drouin, I want to go back to you. Um, we have heard uh, over the last day and a half a lot of the arguments from Conservatives in Ottawa that the Conservative government in Ontario is at least putting forward a deficit-cutting plan with a date attached, uh, 2023, for a balanced budget, whereas your federal government, the Trudeau government, after four years, still hasn't proposed a date for eliminating the deficit. Does this put you on the defensive when there's a comparison of budgets that do predict a concrete elimination of the deficit, whereas you have not tied yourself to that yet? Well, I think we've seen this movie before in, uh, in Ottawa, um, where a previous Conservative government put a, a, an alternate date to a balanced budget. But what they did is they sold GM shares at a loss. And I challenge any Canadians to go to their financial planner. Right, but I'm ask asking them, you about your government. I, I'm just going to interrupt. Yeah. But I'm asking you about your government. Your government hasn't proposed a date. You talked about the percentage so, of the GD, GDP. That's right. Um, so the, are you not at a disadvantage when others can point to, a, say, an Ontario government and saying, well, they have a date? Well, we have a plan to grow the economy. We have a plan to invest in infrastructure. I don't have one single mayor in my, uh, in my riding that's not asking for investments in infrastructure. And let's continue talking about what the Ontario government did. They delayed access to infrastructure money for uh, municipalities. And I mean, they've just released the rural and uh, infrastructure fund for rural municipalities a few weeks ago. Now, that means by the time they analyze the applications, municipalities will once again miss the construction season this summer. So we have a real plan to grow the economy. We have a real plan to invest in infrastructure, be partners with municipalities, and at the same time reduce our percentage of net to GDP ratio. Okay, Jamie Schmel, you, you've seen what's happened already in the last, uh, say, 36 hours. There is a full court press uh, from liberal politicians, but some NDPers as well, federally, saying that this, uh, this Ford government uh, budget proves it, that it's conservative economics, cutting social spending. For example, the health care in Ontario is not even going to keep up with the cost of living. There's going to be a billion dollars cut from social services. The accusation is that this just shows what conservative economics is about. It's, it's, it's mean-spirited and it's cutting social spending. Well, I think one thing you have to want, uh, keep in mind that the third biggest line item on the Ontario budget is interest on the debt. You're paying about $12 billion a year in interest. And Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty, through their failed policies, have put Ontario in a terrible financial position. And the Ford government was elected to look at ways to bring the debt and deficit under control, and they've set a plan for that. Now, keep in mind, the federal Liberals set a date on when the budget would be balanced, and it's supposed to be this year. Instead, we're running at about $18 billion in the hole this year. And now, after we look at the forecast into the future, it shows they had no real plan or no real interest in actually balancing the budget at all. We're up to year 2045 before we even see a hint of balancing the budget, and that's if plan plans go absolutely according to what they have written down. Okay, I want to change the subjects because uh, we're running out of time, but there is another big subject that came up this week, and I know it's of interest to all three of you, and that is the changes in the Budget Implementation Act this week. The BIA was, uh, was tabled. Francis Durand, uh, your government uh, has tabled changes, major changes, to the regulations for asylum seekers. Removes any chance of asylum seekers getting a hearing if they've applied for refugee status in another country. Why? Are these changes being introduced now and in a budget implementation bill? Well, we are running out of uh, runway uh, in June, and what we want to ensure is a fair balance in, in the system system and the, in the refugee system. So if a uh, refugee makes a claim in the U.S., I think we deem the U.S. a safe country. And again, it's just about providing the balance in, in our system. But why now? I mean, it, why make changes if for the last three and a half years you've been saying everything's under control, we are doing all that's necessary? I'm just wondering about the timing. Well, we just want to ensure a proper balance in the future. We want to send the right message that, um, yes, Canada is a, is a safe country. It's a welcoming country. But at the same time, we want to ensure the uh, long-term uh, sustainability of our system. Okay, Jamie Schmiel, your reaction to what we saw in the budget implementation bill, these immigration measures? Well, first of all, it was the Liberals who broke our immigration and refugee system with their irresponsible tweet. They failed to prioritize the needs of the most vulnerable around the world. They called Conservatives names, including un-Canadian, when we tried to address the exact points that my friend just mentioned. So thinking of this as, wow, there's a problem, we're going into an election, now we have to fix it. Why wasn't this done immediately three years ago when, when RCMP, Border Services, the opposition, started telling Parliament and Canadians that there is a problem at our border? Okay, Don Davies, weigh in on this, because I know the NDP has been very vocal. What does your party think of these changes and of the fact that they were 
introduced in this budget implementation bill. Well, at the outset, I want to point out that this is, uh, again, uh, another omnibus budget bill that Liberals have introduced, something that they, in opposition, said clearly to Keynes they would never do. But it's, uh, these changes, in our view, are unconscionable and, and mean-spirited. Um, you know, we're telling uh, asylum seekers at the Canadian border that they no longer have the right to make a claim in Canada as they're fleeing Donald Trump America. Um, we know that in the U.S. they have removed gang-based violence and gender-based violence as grounds for seeking asylum. They violated a, a, a number of other international norms and, and frankly they're no longer a safe place. Do you know there were 4,447 successful border crossing asylum seekers from February to December 2017. That's how many people were found by our system to be legitimate refugees who came to our border. Now, by, by the Liberals now taking away those people's rights to even make a claim in Canada, you're putting at risk vulnerable men, women, and children. And, and quite frankly, I think it's pure politics. Justin Trudeau at one point stood in front of the world and wanted to get credit for opening his arms, saying Canada was open to the refugees for the world. Now we get before an election, he's clamping down, just like Stephen Harper would do. It's a mean-spirited approach. I think it violates international law and it changes Canada's reputation as being a wel welcoming, fair place for refugees and those who are most at risk um, seeking help. Okay, well, I want to thank all three of you, and I know all three of you are heading back to your ridings for two weeks for the Easter uh, recess of Parliament. I want to wish you a happy and productive time in your ridings. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you for having thank you. us. Thank you.